Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for returning for another segment. We're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Jan Wekamp. He's joining us here as Vice President, Gastroenterology Disease Area Leader for the Immunology Therapeutic Area at Janssen Research and Development, LLC. He's returning to talk about some new data on Tremphia in uh, UC and Crohn's disease, as well as some new data on Stellara in both of those conditions as well. This data was presented at the 17th Congress of Echo 2022. Welcome back, Jan. How have you been? Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, uh, as as you've been a contributor with us for uh, quite some time, there are some who still may not know you as a contributor. Give us a little bit of uh, your professional background and talk briefly about your role at Janssen. Sure. Yes. Um, So I'm, my name is Jan Wiecom. I'm a physician. I'm also a scientist and I'm trained as a, in internal medicine. I'm trained as a boarded from clinical pharmacologist, and I'm a gastroenterologist. And until like two years ago, I worked as as a professor at the university hospital in Europe. Mm-hmm. And I also had the role of being a chief scientific officer for a biotech um, company, which I co-founded. So I, I had the role of serving patients, being involved in clinical trials, doing research in terms of how why do people get inflammatory bowel diseases? And I was act, uh, actively um, participating in developing new drugs. That was my role. And now at Janssen, I'm responsible for the global strategy in gastroenterology. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. You mentioned uh, irritable bowel disease. These are two. How are they related? So uh, inflammatory bowel diseases like different forms of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis usually start young and they are related to inflammation um, and real inflammatory conditions. Irritable bowel syndrome is a much more common problem in Western societies with diff- different disease types. In my view, we don't completely understand irritable bowel syndrome, but typically you would not see inflamed tissue as compared to Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Now, I did say that we were going to talk about some data that was presented at ECHO 2022 concerning Tremphia and Stellara for both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Uh, what does the current treatment landscape for both of these conditions look like? Yes. So patients do have several options. There are different biological therapies which patients can take. There are also, in a broader sense, still there's a lot of use of steroids, which is something we want to avoid. There are different immunosuppressants with different uh, lines of potential side effects, which is something we also want to avoid with new drug development. So um, patients can choose. Unfortunately, Treatments do not always last forever, and a big majority of patients lose response, and then they, new, then they need new treatment options. One of the major reasons why we continue to see the need of developing new drugs for patients, for these patients. Well, which study was the Tremphia study, and which was the Stellara, or were they combined? Um, so we... At ECHO, we highlighted, uh, we had three different, three major oral presentations. Uh, one, we presented the first long-term data for Crohn's disease, which is the Galaxy study. Mm-hmm. Then we uh, published, or we presented the first data on Kuselkumab, which from fire and ulcerative colitis, the Quasa study. And we show, we presented the first combination data from Vega, which is a combination of uh, IL-23 uh, P19 subunit antagonist with a TNF-alpha antagonist. Mm-hmm. And Stellara long-term data were also presented, but separately. So how were the results of these? Uh, but, 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 uh, but I'm sorry, of course. So if we, for every new program of our investigational drugs, we... We, we have to be better than what we already have. So we compare um, efficacy of Tremphia with what is already out there, including Stellara. 
So how were the results of these uh, studies significant when it comes to physicians treating IBD? In our Galaxy study, we showed, uh, which is a phase two study, we showed that 63.9% of patients treated with Confire achieve clinical remission, which is a very high number and very encouraging. At the same time, the safety um, profile was consistent with the safety profile from Confire in other indications. So that could provide a new treatment options for physicians and patients, and they're very, very um, encouraged by these data. As far as this uh, first-of-its-kind combination therapy in the VEGA study, do you see this as a pathway or a gateway to future monotherapies? Absolutely. I mean, so the, the VEGA data are the first combination data of its kind. Again, it's a IL-23 P19 subunit combination inhibitor with anti-TNF. And the data are very, very encouraging. And now we are, I mean, it is still investigational drug. Mm-hmm. So with these data, we encourage to continue and um, start duet in Crohn's and duet in also to colitis to further um, gain data and I mean, ultimately approve that in patients for Crohn's and also to colitis. Well, speaking of future research, what do you currently have in the pipeline uh, other than these two compounds for treating CD and UC there at Janssen? So we do have several, um, I mean, besides injectables, we do have oral compounds. We do have an oral IL-23 inhibitor in early development. And we um, know that some patients are very hesitant to take injectable therapies. At the same time, we have a variety of alternative mechanisms of action, which we study. And this can be developed in monotherapy, but also in potential combination. And then ultimately, we want to bring all the patients into long-term clinical remission and we want to keep the, the safety profile from our current injectables and make sure that um, say, I mean, safety is one of our most important um, decision the contributors. And so if we develop oral, we want to have the same standards, which we now have for Stellara and Trumpire. Anything that you'd like to add, doctor? So if, if um, physicians or patients want to learn more, they can go on Global Trial Finder, jansen.com and um, again our what we have presented at echo, at echo is investigational I mean data on um, still in development and uh, so the, these trials are still unrolling at the same time um, I just want to highlight that we are of course still very very um, committed to to push the bar and make sure that our drugs will be more effective with a very, very high standard in terms of safety. Always informative. Always a pleasure speaking with you, Jan. Thank you so much for returning. Looking uh, forward to our next conversation. Thank you very much. My pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Jan Wekamp. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com. Health Professional Radio.